is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Welcome to Knox Trinity Worship, September 20th, 2020. As we come to worship, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect the Lekwungen people on whose ter traditional territory we're gathering today. And we remember also the Song He's Esquimalt and Wasanich Nations, uh, whose historical relationship to this land continues to this day. As we continue to work toward re reconciliation, we remember that Orange Shirt Day is on September the 30th. This is a day to wear orange in remembrance of those who suffered in the residential school system, those who died and those who survived and live in our communities today. Please join me in the call to worship, which is based on Psalm 105. It's responsive. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, tell of all God's wonderful works. Glory in God's name, God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the strength of the Lord, seek the Lord's presence continually. Remember the wonderful works God has done the miracles and the judgments God has uttered. O offspring of Abraham, God's servant, children of Jacob, God's chosen ones. The Lord brought the people out with joy, the chosen ones with singing. Praise the Lord. We join our hearts and minds and voices in worship. Let's take a moment now to gather in prayer. Creator God, we are drawn to worship as a fitting response to your love for us. In our time of worship, hold before us the teachings of Jesus Christ so that they claim us with a gentle power. Remind us how our commitment to Christ integrates worship with the deeds of every day. In our time of worship, we recognize and confess our weaknesses, discover our strengths, and offer ourselves in service to a world that is both our home and your creation. Encourage us to love one another with the unselfishness Jesus showed and shared. Encourage us to accept the challenge of reaching toward our own full potentials. Encourage us to confront oppression and hostility with the gospel justice and peace. Be with us always in spirit, as we boldly pray in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Hear these words of hope. It is God's joy to forgive. It is our joy to offer thanks in response. Praise be to God. We're going to sing together, There is a Balm in Gilead. Sometimes I feel discouraged and 
Jesus is your friend, who if you ask for knowledge will never fail to lend. There is a bond in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus who died to save us all. There is a bond in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gilead to heal the sin. Our prayer for illumination. Holy God, guide us on our faith journey. Fill us with your spirit as we seek to hear your word. Keep us faithful to your word as we work side by side in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again at noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable to you, our strength and our hope. Amen. When I was teaching school, we had a weekly spelling list and uh, then a weekly spelling test on Friday. Uh, it was the same maybe in the school where you attended. Uh, and maybe it's even the same today, I'm not sure. For some children, this was great. They were naturally good spellers. It all came very easily to them. For others, it was still pretty great because they had been read to or they had read themselves from a pretty young age and they worked hard to learn how to spell. For others, it was challenging, but they had support. They had support from parents or other adults in their lives and uh, they could work to master their spelling list through the week. For others, the weekly spelling lists, those tests that we had, they were torture. 
Uh, they may have had learning disabilities or they may have come to English as a second language. Some had no support in their study or were overwhelmed with other commitments with family and friends and they couldn't devote as much time to studying their spelling for the week. It didn't seem to be a very fair system since the goal was to encourage all the children to learn to spell and for some it seemed it was doing more harm than good. As I progressed in my teaching career, I eventually came up with a system that suited me quite a bit better. I think it served the needs of the children better too. I did some preliminary assessment and determined the number of words each student needed to work on for the week. 20 for some, 16 for others. For some, three or five words was plenty to work on, just quite enough to tackle for the week. My goal was to build on success. If the child got 100% a few times on the list, they could have a bigger list in subsequent weeks. Certain parents were skeptical. They never really thought that the kids would want to have more words, but the children always strove to improve, and it encouraged everyone to engage in the spelling task with so much more enthusiasm. Now, some would say that the system that I devised was not equal, and that's probably true, but I think it was somewhat more equitable. This may not be a perfect picture, this one that um, is up on the screen now, but it is one that represents what we're talking about. Um, and maybe you've seen one similar to it. This is a reminder that fairness is more about everyone getting what they need than it is about everyone getting uh, the same thing or getting what they deserve. I think this is what the parable that Jesus is telling in our reading from Matthew's Gospel is about too. Getting what we need, which may be different than what we feel we're entitled to. Give us this day our daily bread, not give us all the bread in the basket. The disciples have been wondering who will have been deemed most worthy of reward from Jesus when he's in power. So Jesus tells this parable in response and like many of Jesus' parables, the story of the workers in the vineyard doesn't directly resolve their question. I think it made them, like it makes many listeners today, uncomfortable. I mean, it's certainly been making me uncomfortable for more than a week. I really was struggling to connect with it, but I finally, when I went back to it again and I looked at it, I remembered this is, this is a story that offers an, a vision of what the kingdom of heaven is like a vision of divine generosity, and that helped me a lot. God responds to our needs, and this isn't always comfortable or fair in terms of rational calculations. Grace is given to respond to our deepest needs, grace upon grace. We receive so much more than we deserve. Imagine, if you will, how difficult it must be to be a day laborer. No regular employment, just standing in the town square hoping against hope that someone needs extra work done and will hire you. No unemployment insurance, no social services to fall back on, no CERB or rent deferral. If you're lucky and healthy, you'll get work for the day and a day's wage to provide for your basic needs and those of your family. If you are not so healthy, not so lucky, you'll be passed over maybe more than once, maybe all day, and return home empty-handed. In the parable Jesus tells, everyone gets lucky. Some are chosen early, some are chosen late morning or at noon or mid-afternoon, and some just an hour before quitting time. No doubt these last were overjoyed by their good fortune when they received a full day's wage for an hour of work not because they hadn't wanted to work all day. They had been there just the same as the others, ready, willing, eager, but they had been passed over time and time again until right near the end. The landowner shows generosity and grace to those who arrive later in the day to work, paying them the same as the workers who arrived first. This paints an image of justice and righteousness that differs from conventional wisdom. For many, justice is seen as a reward 
that affects wor reflects worthiness. However, in this story, all are offered the same reward, and those who work longer, well, they really don't like it. They don't like it one little bit. It just doesn't seem fair. But the landowner reminds them that, in fact, it's totally fair. They are being paid just what they were promised, and everyone is getting what they need. That's what I was trying to tell people about my spelling list. Everybody was getting just what they needed. It was fair because everybody was learning to spell. And that was the goal. If anything, in this story, the landowner is being more than fair, is being generous to those who were invited late in the day, as well as perfectly fair to those who were fortunate to be called to work early. That's grace. It turns everything on its head, but we really don't like it. Why? Well, because it's human nature. Through our own insecurity and lack of trust, we come to understand and access our lives, not through the abundance we have been given by God, but instead by what we feel we still lack. Because of this gnawing sense of lack, we define ourselves over and against others, comparing and begrudging their good fortune because it wasn't our good fortune. We all want what we believe we are entitled to. I always think that Sally Brown sums this up best in this short video. I've been looking for you, big brother. Will you please write a letter to Santa Claus for me? Well, I don't have much time. I'm supposed to get down to the school auditorium and direct a Christmas play. You write it and I'll tell you what I want to say. Okay, shoot. Dear Santa Claus, how have you been? Did you have a nice summer? How is your wife? I have been extra good this year, so I have a long list of presents that I want. Oh, brother. Please note the size and color of each item and send as many as possible. If it seems too complicated, make it easy on yourself. Just send money. How about tens and twenties? Tens and twenties? Oh, even my baby sister. All I want is what I have coming to me. All I want is my fair share. We just want what's coming to us. We just want our fair share. Because it is our broken human nature to measure everything and keep track of what we are owed. Rather than feeling fortunate to have found work for the day, some feel unfortunate at not having received more. Rather than rejoicing that these other workers who waited all day for the prospect of work can return home blessed to be able to feed their families, they can only begrudge them, perhaps even curse them for their good fortune. And rather than be grateful to the one who has given them an honest day's wage for an honest day's work, they can only grumble with resentment. This parable, I think, is all about unfairness, the unfairness of God's grace, because it turns the idea of fair on its head. The parable is about God's grace, about showing up and receiving what we are given with thanksgiving. This is an in-your-face attempt, not just to startle us with the scandal of grace, but to make us just a little bit mad about it, our resentment, our squirming, even momentarily, over the apparent unfairness of grace reveals something about us and lays before each of us a choice. When we look at our lives, do we count our blessings or our misfortunes? Do we pay attention to the areas of plenty in our lives or what we perceive we lack? Do we live by gratitude or envy? Do we look to others in solidarity and compassion or see them only as competition? We can't really be grateful and envious at the same time. We need to let go of our sense of entitlement and embrace instead God's generous grace, so much more than our fair share or what we deserve. Grace is exactly the blessing we need. Amen. Let's join in singing Amazing Grace, verses 1 to 4. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that 
saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now. taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed the hour I first His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has Let us pray. God of hope, creator and sustainer, you have been with us through all our history as individual persons and as people of the church. When the world is bleak and dim, you pierce the shadows with light. You help us see new paths and possibilities. For hope in times of despair, for clarity when we feel confused, for a way forward when we thought all was lost, we give you thanks. We pray today for those who feel hopeless, for those who are sick or dying, for those who mourn, and for those weighed down by heavy burdens. May each of us know and share your gift of hope. God of peace, there is conflict all around us, in our world, our communities, our families, even our closest relationships. We thank you for steps toward reconciliation in our lives, our communities, and among peoples of different cultures and histories. We pray today for places where pain, violence, and cruelty seem to have the upper hand. May each of us know and share your gift of peace. God of joy, we give you thanks for moments of delight and occasions of celebration, for happy gatherings, gentle solitude, pleasure given and received, for laughter, friendship and love. We remember those who do not taste such joy, those who are lonely or bitter, hurt or difficult to love. May each of us know and share your gift of joy. God of love, your love was born for us in the human life of Jesus, 
whose love stretched to include outsiders and those rejected by others. We are so grateful to be part of his circle. We pray for our families, those closest to us, and for anyone estranged. We pray for friends and acquaintances, strangers, those quite different from ourselves, and even for our enemies. Help us draw our circles of affection wider, seeing our kinship with all people. May each of us know and share your gift of love. Hear us now as we pray for those who have come to mind this day, offering the concerns of our own hearts in this time of silence. As you are with us and within us, O God, give us the strength to live for you as authentic followers of Jesus. Amen. Let's uh, take time now to sing together God of Grace and God of Glory, verses 1, 3, and 5. together in person and the offering that you may have sent in, um, whether it was by par or whether you mailed a check or whether you dropped uh, a check off at the church. However you've managed to get your offering to the church, we are very thankful. Uh, and uh, I would ask you now to join with me in the offering prayer. Generous God, thank you for the opportunity to support your church. May the gifts we offer by par or cash or check, be transformed into acts of kindness, expressions of solidarity, and deeds of compassion. As we share these offerings, we also commit ourselves to the courageous task of being your witnesses. All grace and mercy are yours, Almighty God. Amen. Freely you have received, freely give. Never forget that God has blessed you. Pray for the grace to treat others as God has treated you. And may our lives be blessed by the abundant grace of God, the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ, and the limitless power of the Holy Spirit. 
We're going to sing together, We Will Go Out With Joy, which is a new hymn for us, and I think you're going to love it. Sing a new song of joy. 